excuse me, miss, you know you more than the vibe. Ever since we crossed paths, I'm not ignoring the signs. We could get together, live together, build together with the weather. What up, everybody? This is Chris from CBD bringing you some more live action. A little bit of an early lunchtime rewind with a special guest. We have Miss Erica Denier from Mammoth P in the house. Hey. What's up, Erica? How you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Um, you know what? Uh, I think we've met a couple times uh, via a couple local trade shows, but we've really never had the time to uh, sit down and really chop it up. So. <clears throat> I know I've been looking forward to this one, um, and today let's just jump right in it. Um, I'm sure a lot of people out there know Erica. She's been on the scene. She's the uh, local kid that's going national multiple times, and we're going to dig into that a little bit as well. Yeah. But uh, Erica, how did you even, uh, you know, where are you from? So I'm originally from Connecticut, and I come from a family of multiple generations of floriculture. Mm -hmm. So like my great, great grandfather was the second largest flower distributor in the world in the 1920s. My entire family has been in the flower business. So that's a little bit of my like green thumb background. I was a terrible kid. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to get into trouble and stuff. Uh, definitely led me to kind of getting into the weed thing you know yeah um but yeah i spent a lot of time in connecticut growing up and kind of traveling around a lot I always was a little bit of a nomad yep <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so you're a little mischievous you got two green thumbs you got a long long family multi-generational growers mm-hmm and it led you to the track, the green track. The green track. The golden sure. track. Yeah, definitely. And I, you know, ended up moving out to California and that was kind of where it all started for me, you know, out there. Is where, that where you threw down your first cannabis plants? That's where they that's where they went down. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Do you so remember what strands you were growing? Definitely um, it was a Chem ninety one back cross from Western Mass. And then um, some blue dream because that's classic. what's up blue classic. dream baby <laughs> yeah i don't know what's up with blue dream i mean i think a lot of maybe cultivators and uh a lot of other folks out there just gave that thing a, a bad name every time i've had blue dream specifically in the santa cruz region of california it's always fire. It's always been fire. Every time I've smoked it, every time it's fire. Especially when you're doing the California organic sun-grown blue dream. It's got the nicest high for me, at least. It's one of my favorite smokes. Mm -hmm. So when you went out there and you started growing, were you growing little plants? Were you growing big plants? Like, did You, you jumped all in? And then yeah, we I went from doing... 200 gallon smart pots up to 800 gallon smart pots Oof. in a couple of years you know kind of eased into it but two and 300 gallon smart pots we started um i was you know we were mixing our own soil doing compost teas fully organic it definitely helped me learn a lot about just the essentials of what plants need how they use their nutrients you know learned about microbiology compost teas you know all of that stuff is really the essentials of cannabis and growing right there um i find that with a lot of synthetic you know nutrients learning that way you're not fully understanding what you're feeding your plants it's just like okay i'm following this feeding schedule and part one, a part b you one, know one through right one exactly so you know i think that's uh, that's where a lot of my root um education of of the cannabis plant came from was those years i spent doing organic sun grown you know out in california and then i was up in oregon southern oregon for a couple of years and loved it out there that's what's up and another thing what's up is the organic so that's like full circle for people that start off in it and then they you know you've seen the huge explosion with the hydroponic liquid nutrients and, and it, now a lot of people are using salts but ultimately organic is hands down the best 
best for you, best flower, best smoke, best smell, usually most best bag appeal. I mean, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, regionally here in Rhode Island and as well as Massachusetts of getting into some uh, dealing or trying out some cultivators that are really focusing on those organics. And um, I'm also looking to chat with some more of those guys because I'm kind of a dirt nerd and that's just kind of what I'm into as well. But no, nah, that's cool. So, you know, you, you grew out there and then um, uh, you're a professional in the industry, well respected across the board nationally. And how did you arrive from, you know, growing in California to landing a gig with Mammoth P? Or was there any other yeah, stop so, along the way in your hydro hustle yep, coming up? So I went from California, or I went from Oregon. Um, the market was getting really saturated there. Um, we were getting really bad russet mites and. There was a lot of variables going on. So, um, and, you know, Massachusetts had just legalized. You know, we had medical markets out on the East Coast, which is where I'm from. You know, originally this is like my home. So, East Coast. Yeah, I was like, and when I got to the West Coast, it was like everybody was already very well established. So I was very new there. So I'm like, let me go back home and I'll bring what I know to that market. And so when I came back, I first, I was managing a hydro store in Rhode Island, actually, mm. um, in Warwick. And I had a grow, I had a medical grow. So I was a caregiver. So I had a grow right in the same parking lot. Oh, how <laughs> convenient. was very convenient. Yeah, I could just like forklift my dirt right into the side of the building. <laughs> it was great. Um, and I what had, came first, the uh, the job or the grow? I had I got a I built a grow in my house first, and then I got the job at the hydro store, and then that that space became available, and I mm -hmm. took it. So you are very very smart. <laughs> well, it was so, it was a no brainer. <laughs> so I got in there, and you know I was at the hydro store for I think about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And Mammoth was a newer company at the time. When I started at the hydro shop, I brought in a lot of new nutrient lines and Mammoth was very new at that, at that time. And we were one of the first accounts to open with them in this area. So we brought them in and I used the product myself in my grow and I had great results. And I've used like everything because I'm one of those people where I'm like, I want to try it for myself mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know working in the hydro shop you get access to a lot of different stuff people give you samples so i was definitely one to be trying every little thing i could get my hands on so i ran the mammoth loved it so i was selling a lot of it at the store because mm -hmm. i was believed in it you know and when the time came that they needed somebody here on the east coast they ended up asking me if i wanted the job and so, yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I, you know, put in was my Was that another no-brainer for you or yeah, what? Yeah, honestly, it's funny because I had had people kind of approach me about sales jobs in the industry before that, but nothing super serious. And I always thought in my head, like, if there was any company I would really want to work for, it would be Mammoth. Mm -hmm. And that was the one. So when they asked me, I was like, of course. It's funny sometimes how you start thinking those things and then the stuff starts happening. Yeah, so, manifested yeah. for sure. <laughs> and you know that, that's the right track. You got to just jump on that one real quick. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there listening um, that know Mammoth P, and I'm sure there's a lot that don't. Let's talk about you know Mammoth P. They got a really cool story. I don't want to butcher it, so I'm going to leave that up to you. Mm -hmm. Let's dig into Mammoth P itself and the company and then maybe the, the products itself after that. Yeah, so Mammoth has a really interesting backstory. A lot of people don't know. We are based out of Fort Collins, Colorado, and we were developed by three microbiologists at Colorado State University. And basically the school had gotten a grant to study soil microbes because we were trying to figure out how to allow plants to absorb more of the nutrients that we're feeding them. 
um, mostly because of ecological issues. Um, in large scale farming, we're dumping tons of nutrients into the soil and it's being mineralized and then it's not being used by the plants, but it's going into runoff causing algae blooms and things like that. One of the main causes of algae blooms is phosphorus runoff. Phosphorus is also the most important nutrient for flowering plants. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of where their head was at is how can we allow the plants to absorb more of the phosphorus that we're feeding them? And a lot of it was, okay, naturally soil microbes break down nutrients and allow the plants to absorb them. So that's where we went with it. Uh, they developed a biotechnology that allows them to select bacteria based off specific function. So we uh, cycle through billions of strains of soil microbes that we collected from all over the country. We actually, a lot of, some of our clients helped us. Uh, they sent in soil samples for us to kind of run through this DNA sequencing system. Um, and that allows us to pull specific strains. And then from those, we put them together in different microbial communities to see how they would function together. And that's how Mammoth P came to be was basically just a process of elimination of studying these bacteria in these microbial communities and watching how they function and then taking the ones that broke down phosphorus the best and kept putting them together. And so we came down with four strains that specifically targets phosphorus. They break down phosphorus 30 times stronger than any bacteria known in nature. Um, they're very, very strong as far as they can survive harsh environments. They do really well in a water environment, which is why we can run it in hydroponics and through dosing systems and everything. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it was cool kind of how they discovered it because it wasn't even intended <laughs> for um, necessarily the cannabis market, but once we developed that product, we ran <clears throat> trials on absolutely everything. And we have tons of data on our um, website. You can look up um, articles in the Journal of Horticulture. They're scientifically peer-reviewed articles that have a lot of our data from different plant trials that we've run. And it works great on any flowering crop. Mm -hmm. um, but being from Colorado, we obviously dabbled with the cannabis and, you know, we see such a huge increase in overall yield using that because of that extra phosphorus uptake. That's kind of the market that we ended up in mm -hmm. was in cannabis. Um, so one of the microbiologists, Colin Bell, he left the university and he actually, the first batches of mammoth were brewed in his garage. You know, like it was, we were a startup. We you know, we didn't have much money. We got funding and, you know, had some investors come in and went up from his garage to a transmission shop that he <clears> like <throat> rented out and cleaned up. And now we're in the, f the facility he got after that. We're still there and we make everything in house. We, you know, do, we have a lab there. We, make it, bottle it, ship it all out of one facility. Our office is there, um, right in Fort Collins. So we still have some greenhouses and stuff off site, and we do still do some stuff at the university. So we have access to a little bit of uh, equipment there. That's a that's one heck of a story, and big ups to Colin for starting his business out of a garage. Right. So many great businesses that genius. grow organically, tend to come out of garages or in this industry, sometimes basements, but you know, um, <laughs> you joke around with that all the time from basements to forums, but what a great story and still being able to leverage his, his relationship previously, uh, with the university, the, the amount of, you know, trials and studies and data, uh, research that can be done properly. Um, and then, then as you guys, as professionals getting out in the field and, you know, using, as you said, across the board with like every kind of, of garden, whether it be organic, uh, uh, hydroponics, um, 
basically out of any grown medium, right? Exactly, yeah. So it works with any nutrient system in any medium, um, which is really nice. It's very compatible with, you know, especially in cannabis, you know, there's no nutrient line you can't use it with. And it works. We see very similar results across the board, whether it's hydroponics, organics, synthetics, cocoa, rock wool. Um, you get benefits out of it in a lot of different ways. That is awesome. So you started with uh, Mammoth P. What was your territory? Did you just cover like Rhode Island and Mass? So I, when I first started, I was doing the whole entire East Coast. <laughs> and it was a lot. So I covered from Maine all the way down to Florida. And it was a big territory, you know, and we were still getting into shops. So I, you know, essentially I'm going to hydro stores and trying to get the product on the shelf. Um, and going and meeting with large-scale cultivators and trying to introduce that into their growing system. Mm -hmm. And with Mammoth P, it's more profitable on a large scale because your return on investment is very high. So when you use it, you know, on a bigger crop, you're, you know, your increase is going to be quite a bit. We see people profiting hundreds of thousands of dollars just by adding one product to their system. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where Mammoth P really shines, I find. And because it's very concentrated and easy to run through dosing systems, a lot of those commercial guys really like to use it. So I spend a lot of time meeting with commercial cultivators and helping them just apply it into their system. Um, and a lot of times we do trials, they'll run their own trials so they can see the results because the product really does speak for itself. So, you know, we definitely do sample stuff out and, you know, we let it speak. A lot of these guys are on um, seed to sale tracking, so they know exactly what they're pulling out of all their rooms. So it's very clear when you add something and see a 16 to 20 percent increase in overall yield it's quite significant yeah that's like surplus city yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey jesse why don't you pull up the website mammoth give everybody a little view nice site Oh, you got multiple products up there. So yeah. you guys dabble in some other types of products as well? So we just came out with some new stuff. That's our newest product. And the can control is something really special that we developed because of just a need in the market for it. And really it was now we're finding that a lot of pesticides that have been commonly used are harmful to consume when you're inhaling it mm -hmm. so um and when combusted so you know there's not a lot of plants that we spray with pesticides and then we light it up and smoke it um and they're finding that it's carcinogenic a lot of the things that we're spraying on the plants is not good for you to inhale like that so this is uh and now you, you know, all these cultivators are under very strict regulations. So they're not allowed to use a lot of different products. So um, they can, especially in Massachusetts, they're only allowed to use 25B compliant pesticides. Mm -hmm. So that is a pesticide and a fungicide. It will do spider mites, thrips, aphids, white flies, um, fungus gnats, it will do powdery mildew and botrytis. Mm -hmm. So it's something you foliar spray with. You can use it as a root drench if you're having issues with stuff in your soil. Um, but it's mostly meant to be used as a preventative. Um, it is all natural. So it's got a thyme oil base. We've essentially extracted components of thyme oil in a concentrated form, and it works as a suffocant and a repellent. So the oil itself will coat the bugs and uh, their eggs, and they suffocate, right, and die. And then... Which is a good thing. Right, and then <laughs> the thyme oil acts as a repellent. So that will make the pests not want to come into your garden. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What else we got? 
while we're on this topic and got the uh, so we had that bio control was our first version mm -hmm. and the can control is now our second version the bio control will be phased out but we still have it available the bio control essentially was just an insecticide mm -hmm. and we reformulated it to make it a little bit easier to use we had some customer feedback. People wanted it to be more concentrated. They wanted it to not, you don't have to use a wetting agent with the new one. So before you had to use a wetting agent with it, this one has a really good emulsifier in it. So it will, you don't need to add a wetting agent. It mixes into the water just absolutely perfectly. And you can spray it through any type of atomizer. Mm -hmm. So it's just much easier to apply. We also reformulated it a little bit. So it does treat for powdery mildew and botrytis. Um, we changed some concentrations of the oil, just a little bit of a better product. It's good. It seems like at Mammoth, you guys take the feedback that, that you get, get from the boots on the ground and kind of put it into play. We take it very seriously. Like we are all about bringing quality products to the market. That's why we don't have much mm -hmm. <laughs> because we don't want to just put something out and try to push it on people. We want products that are solving problems for growers and that actually work. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at. And <laughs> the bio control, you know, it was a good product and we got a ton of great feedback, but we wanted to make it a little bit better. And so we did. And it, you know, that was. And you it, get the means to do it. You got, looks like awesome in house. And then you can also totally. lean on the university too for some of that stuff if you're still doing that. Totally. Yeah. You know, we. <clears throat> we wish we could expand bigger faster mm -hmm. but you know we only have so much resources um but we are working on bringing more products to the market and we will see more products in the market very soon i would think um, before the end of this year definitely next year we'll have at least another new product out that's awesome. More products, more mm -hmm. distribution for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so locally, some of you may or may not know um, Erica on the hydroponic scene with, with Mammoth. I do. Uh, we, I, we shared boots or didn't I say shared boots, but not the same event like NECAN as well as Harvest Cup. But you won a couple of awards at NECAN. Yeah, I won 2000. 19 i won um the no local kid gone national mm -hmm. uh which was exciting that's awesome I, that's such a like nice feather in your cap because you're working so hard you're covering a lot of ground like from it was maine really, to florida you are hustling it was flattering because yeah. you know i wasn't expecting to even be nominated first of all and i was in a category with some really big names and so it was it was definitely flattering and I appreciate everybody that <laughs> voted for me. You mm -hmm. know, it's it makes me feel like I'm well accepted in the community and you know, I put in a lot of work, so it's nice to feel noticed. Yeah, you put your time in and the stuff starts paying off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be going back to back. back yeah, to back. I hope so. So I was nominated again this year, um, which everybody voted already and then Nikan got cancelled because of coronavirus so, uh, so yeah. tough it's been a we'll find out in 2021 i think 2021 <laughs> we're coming for you knee can look out yeah that's right eric is gunning <laughs> running and gunning um no but that's awesome um it's it's especially awesome for women in cannabis um because it's typically uh you know back in the day was a male dominated industry um and we see a I'm I'm starting to see a lot more um, you know, females in the game and they're really holding their own. And yeah. fellas, you better you better pull your big boy pants up when you get into the the room like with a woman like Erica cuz she's going to out hustle you. <laughs> it happens. Um you know, it's it's funny how I think you know, it was very much male dominated. And now we see a lot more women, especially on the business side of things, kind of behind the scenes doing a lot with the, uh, in the cannabis industry and, and in front of people, you know, it, it's, it's nice to see that. And I, it's being very well accepted. And I think a lot of these females are really holding their own and, and proving themselves. And 
I've had to prove myself, but you know, it's like when you put in time and you work hard, it's, you know, people respect it. They respect your knowledge. And, you know, I, I think I am well respected in the community. I'm well respected by my coworkers and my bosses and as well as clients that I have. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's nice to see that because when I was growing up, I definitely didn't ever expect to be where I am now. Mm -hmm. Like I, never thought in a million years I'd be able to work in cannabis professionally and have a job like I do now. Well, you know what? One who uh, gets respect also gives respect. That's a two-way street. And, uh, you know, thinking of that, um, talk about some mentors. Any mentors in the industry? Like any people you look up to or probably now being on national circuit, you probably pick up the phone and talk to them or... And anybody you lean on in the industry for maybe a couple different people or maybe yeah. one? Yeah. I mean, honestly, Colin Bell, my boss, is one of the most inspiring people. He is a great mentor to us, and I definitely owe a lot to him. Um, you know, I came into working at Mammoth with no actual sales experience other than my retail sales experience, which, you know, so I never went to college for sales. Mm -hmm. So we have, I have some professional mentors for sales as well. Steve Noodleberg, he wrote a book called um, Confessions of a Serial Salesman. He's one of our best mentors and he was definitely somebody that, you know, he's done some, um, sessions with us and trained us and he's somebody that if i had a question i could call you know anytime and i know he would definitely have a good answer for me Mm -hmm. so you know there's a couple people i can reach out to people that i look up to in the industry though um you know just people in our community that are doing big things that have come from so little it's inspiring to see that Mm -hmm. like everybody around me inspires me really it's it's the people that i get to work with on a daily basis that like inspire me because i see them like living their dreams and it makes me you know push farther and you know work harder so i i really i appreciate the community that we have here as well as you know, my friends on the West Coast, I have a lot of grower friends that just, you know, I, they've taught me so much and I learn every day off of the people around me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that's, that's where I get the most information. It's absorbing everything that I see. And I, I'm blessed enough to be able to know all these amazing people Mm -hmm. and talk to people. And I listen and I ask questions and I, that's, that's where I get a lot of, you know, my inspiration and my knowledge from. That's awesome. I, I, I did a little bit of, did a little bit of homework. I was never a big homework guy in school myself, but I saw you had the opportunity to meet Steve D'Angelo. Yeah, Steve is, he's amazing. He's one of the most inspirational people in the industry, in my opinion, just because of the actual footwork he's put in. And, you know, people have different opinions, but you know, he's with the last uh, prisoner project, you know, he's getting people out of jail. That's an awesome project. Right. Like there's so many things, but he was one of the first people putting in the groundwork, getting us legalization, getting us medical marijuana. And he's done it not only for his area, but he's gone other places and done that advocacy work. So I just think he's he he's really put his time and energy full heartedly into this. So it was really nice to meet him. He was actually at our business Christmas party and it was a surprise. And so we were all like, just like boom the santa claus of like, cannabis walks through the door we hey were steve like, how you doing are you serious i'm like in the photo booth we're like dressing up <laughs> like i'm like this is steve d'angelo right here we're just like chilling and he was so great he gave a speech and um you know it was nice to hang out with him for a bit and just get to like talk and chat and hear his stories and mm-hmm. you know he's he's definitely a huge inspiration that's uh that's awesome he's a he's legendary fought the good fight fought the federales um i don't know if those fights are still going on and all but he ran ran through the mud for this industry set up some awesome 
awesome dispensaries, Harborside out in like San Jose and, uh, and Oakland. It's the biggest one. It's if you live in California, you know Harborside. I think like, I picked up a couple clones exactly. there. Exactly. He always used to have like, especially early on, he had great genetics there. He mm -hmm. was one of the real pioneers in the industry out there, even so. A true OG. That's what's up. You know what else is up? MJ BizCon. Oh. Have you attended that? Oh my gosh, of course. You, If you've been, you've probably seen me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually out there. Um, it's one of my favorite events. I mean, come on, it's Vegas. Mm -hmm. We always have a good time. Mammoth, we always get a booth at the trade show. I'm usually real run down by the end of it, but... Yep. You know, Some we do our best. Long nights and long days. Those long are nights and long days for sure. Unbelievable trade show that is. Huge. The I think size there was like grown five year after thousand year. exhibitors last year. Insane. It's hard to even. Unless I tell people, unless you know what you're going there for, like make a plan because you're not going to see everything, or you're just going to be so overwhelmed you're going to get halfway through it and just want to leave. <laughs> It's yeah. really, it's a lot. It's like Disney. You got to plan your day. You got to get them fast passes. You get right to the, right. the boots you want to see know, right away. Get yeah. the FaceTime. Know where you're going. Know who you want to talk to. You know, reach out ahead of time even if you need to because it's so busy. Luckily, we bring enough people with us where we're like taking shifts. So I'm not on full day. <clears throat> which makes it a lot easier. Um, but we do a lot of extracurricular uh, networking as well. Team building. Yeah. <laughs> Team building activities. Team building exercises for sure. <laughs> yeah, I've been out there a few times. I, I didn't go last year. It, it was always in my calendar in, in November's, and then I think they changed it to December last year. They did, which was really unfortunate. And I actually ended up skipping last year and going to Emerald Cup instead mm -hmm. because I had the option and I love Emerald Cup and I didn't want to do both. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's too much. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of traveling. Uh, yeah, and it's just a lot, a lot of, of talking too. to people. Mm -hmm. It's it's tough doing, like, when you do a trade show for three days, it's I'm talking to people all day, the entire time. And then we have the after events, and I'm talking to people all night, like, yelling over loud music. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it gets, it wears you down. And so. Don't worry now, because Joss of CBD's got you. We got that recovery. Yeah. The recovery <laughs> drink. So we're going to set you up nice, nice on the on the way out with a nice care package. <laughs> Big ups yeah. to Jocelyn in the CBD Center of Rhode Island. Yes, thank so, you. So let, let's uh, let's kick it into a different gear. You know, mm -hmm. Erica, um, you are into arts and culture and graffiti and rap music and trap music and foodie. Foodie, yeah, all the things. You play instruments. You in a band? No, I'm not in a band, but I just started playing the bass recently, and I'm loving it. How's that going? I just absolutely love it. Do you learn off like an iPad or something? Um, yeah, like on my phone, I learned how to read tabs and kind of just been doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, just like messing around at home, you know, like having fun with it. I would love to like learn how to make beats. I got Ableton. I'm got an mpk i got some recording stuff i'm like gonna just vibe with it you know not taking it too seriously but i'm always busy and this is the first time in my life that i've been doing like nothing like being stuck at home during quarantine you know i do outside sales so i'm at trade shows i'm going around visiting clients i'm traveling I'm usually in front of people all the time. So right now I'm just, I've got a lot of time on my hands. I'm working from home. I'm like, I need to do something. I stare at my computer screen all day. <laughs> and then the last thing I want to do is like turn on the TV at night. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, I was like, I got to do something. My friend was like, have you ever played the bass? He was like, I could see you as a bass player. And I was like, you know what? I think so too. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so I bought a bass and I've just been, yeah, playing that. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I uh, I wish I could, you know, play an instrument or even speak a second language, but I don't think my brain works that way. But I might give it a, I might give it a whirl. Yeah. yeah my, bass my... is easy. Four strings, you know? It's like, it's pretty, it I didn't was, take me that long to pick it up. I was down the Tetrahydra Club beating the drums with my kids yesterday. Drums are fun. That was a lot of fun. 
I love the Tetra Hydro Club. You've been there before? Yeah, definitely. That's what's up. Yes. Have you been to any of his previous cups? Yes, we've sponsored all the Cultivator Cups wow. so far. And it's honestly one of my favorite events. We'll be at the one in Massachusetts coming up for ooh, sure. Ooh, ooh. Um, with Red Man and Method Man, Oof. which... You know, I'm excited about. So I did the one, I did one already with Red Man, and that was really fun. Or that was, that wasn't the Cultivator Cup, but it was, I've done a little, we did a party there. That was good. Um, but I've done the previous Cultivator Cups in Rhode Island mm -hmm. here, and those were always really fun times. This one's going to be uh, legit. Yeah. Massachusetts needs a real cup, and uh He's coming to play. He's bringing the, the big boys and the big guns. And uh, I'm looking forward to that judge's box that he's going to have. I'm looking forward to the concert. We're going to have a booth as well. So we'll see you there with the uh, the business-to-business -business events. And, um, man, it's going to be a blast. There's never really been a, uh, a party like that where you can uh, – there's something for everybody. Totally. Yeah, I mean, it really brings out a great crowd, too. Mm -hmm. I just, like – I love the vibe, the culture, like you get a little hip hop, you get a little weed going mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, this is my vibe for sure. <laughs> and even somebody, some folks have friends that, you know, even don't smoke sometimes. So they even have beverages, adult beverages as well off site, And then Solar Therapeutics, from what the pharmacist was telling me, is doing a great job backing in and they're going to have like a golf cart ride if you need to get more grass and then go back to the party. So... I'm sure he has a lot of tricks up his sleeve, so there's going to be some fun stuff going down there. The pharmacist always knows what to do, I think, when it comes to throwing a party. So I'm I'm expecting it to be really cool. I'm excited. It is. It's going to be really cool. Another cool thing going down it's this Thursday. It's at, it's at our uh, Wakefield location. We uh, occupy the, the lobby of the former Tetra Hydro Club. And uh, the back is, is, is still going strong. Lots of musicians coming through there. I was in there uh, last night listening to the Ty Cooper show, and uh, we had a big announcement. We're going to be throwing a Not Your Average farmer's market down there. Uh, we, have a, we have an organic farmer coming and bringing his vegetables, a food truck, some music, uh, with the goal is to kind of, you know, get out of the house. They have a huge parking lot there, so we can, you know, keep our distance. Um have some CBD, have a drink, have some food, be merry. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. If you're ever in town, we're going to be hosting that every Thursday for the remaining of the summer. Oh, awesome. And hopefully we can extend that into the uh, the fall as well if we get a nice extended long summer like we did last year. I Fingers love a crossed. long summer. Yeah. I'm expecting you. Now I'm extending the invite. I got to see I'll you at one there. of them. I'll be there. I'll be there. You know, I pop up. Bring your homegirls. Bring everybody. Bring the boys. Totally. Bring the crew. We love veggies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna have some fire food trucks there, so we're oh, gonna try yeah. and encapsulate. You know, on you know, a, on I'm down for the food. Yeah, we're know? trying to do it on like a micro level. Of, you know, businesses have food suffered. And and weed, and, yeah. I'm, I'm in. You just can't beat that with a bat. That's for sure. <laughs> um, you know, Erica, I just wanna, I wanna thank you for coming on. Um, it's been, it's been a great show. I got to learn a lot about you. Um, you're a boss, obviously listening to you break down the uh, chemical compounds of the different products and how they apply to all different types of like fertigation systems and uh, gardening techniques, wealth of knowledge. Um, I hope to have you back on the show. We're going to be doing a little media at the Cultivators Cup, so hopefully we can have some fun there. Definitely. I would love to, yeah. Maybe you can write that rap. And I can oh. play the bass and we can get some live action Maybe or something you'll like do that. the rap. I'll play the bass. All right. We'll all right, switch we'll, that up. All right. All right. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see. I think I might be able to come up with a, with a lyric or two. I think we could figure something out. Yeah. I'll bring the bass for sure. I'll have to hit up some boys. Maybe get a like, ghost friend in peace for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thanks again. And uh, this is another, another uh, episode of Jossa. Special edition number eight with Erica Danier of Mammoth P. Brought to you by me, Chris from CBD, as well as Felicia's Coffee. Big ups to Felicia's and their delicious coffee. Uh, if you frequent there, stop by there. Be on the lookout for the CBD single serve. So good. THC free. Spreads a wide net. It's good for everybody. Get your health and wellness. Maybe a little recovery pre or post workout in. And that's all I got.
Jasa CBD, CBD Center, Rhode Island. Erica, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. We have to go kick it in the green room afterwards. We're going to blaze it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Peace, everybody. Mm-hmm.